Welcome to part 2 of my tutorial on making a little soot sprite from Spirited Away. If you haven't already seen part 1 where we did the modeling, go ahead and watch that. It's really straightforward and simple. But in this part over here, we're going to be adding the fur here to our little soot sprite. And hopefully it's um, something you'll enjoy as well. And I'll be adding the final blend file to my Patreon. You can check that out in the description. So let's jump right in and make him look sooty with some fur particles. So now that we're in part two, we're going to work on the hairs. So we're going to select the body. And I think what we'll actually end up doing is just going over to a modifier and just with a sub diff level of one, we're going to go ahead and apply this. And I think that should be more than enough for what we're trying to do. Okay, so we're also going to go over to our particle settings. We're going to go plus to create a new system. And we're going to make it hair. And then you're going to come here to the hair length. And this one we're going to drag down. We want kind of shorter hair. And then just come down to your viewport display. Make the strand steps free. Under the render, come down and enable B spline. And then scroll down to the children and then make it interpolated. Okay, pretty cool. Um, this might be a bit of overkill. We could come to the top emission number and let's just make that 700 instead. Should be fine. And um, at the moment, the hairs are everywhere, including where the eyes are. So let's fix that by simply going over to our object data properties. I'm going to go ahead and create a new vertex group. And you can do this one of two ways. You can tap into edit mode and then select and assign mesh groups. Or you can come over here and you can just go and do the weight painting this way. Okay. In fact, maybe an easier way to do is both. So we'll tap into edit mode quickly. Press A to select everything. And with that vertex group selected, we're going to go ahead and assign it. So now if we go into white paint mode, it should all be red, which means it's active. So let's go over here and change this to subtract. Let's press F to grow the brush and then just paint where the eyes are. Okay, I know you can't see it right now. We're kind of just painting away here like that. Awesome. So if we actually came up here and we hit the eyes, you would actually see this, which is kind of creepy, but you know, you get the idea. We just want to kind of paint around like so, just so those hairs aren't sticking through the eyeball. Okay, cool. So now let's go over into our object mode. We kind of now have a sort of heat map and we can go over to our particles, scroll down to our, I think our field weights or vertex groups actually. Yeah, go to vertex groups and then under density, click on here and just select that group. And now the hairs are only over here, which is pretty cool. But I'm going to you know, bring the eyes back. So now let's go over here back to our hair. And we're going to focus here on the children. We're going to come down to the roughness and we're going to start by making it slightly, um, giving it a bit of value in the endpoint. We're also going to go to uniform a little bit and then random. Okay. So now the hairs have a little bit of twirl to them. We're also going to come here to the clumping and just slightly clump these together a little bit like that. Okay. So now we have the first part of this kind of done. Um, so what's happening here as well, I'll quickly explain if we go to our viewport display or actually our children. Yeah. Our children. The display amount here is what we see in the viewport. So if I make this 100, you can actually see this is what we're going to see in our render. Okay. Um, but for now, we you know I'll just make the viewport something like 10 and the render amount will leave it 100. But um, looking at the reference images of the sprites, and I do have one here to the side, um, I recommend you go look the little soot balls up yourself because I don't want to actually put the images on here and get um, copy strike, but what we'll do is we'll add some longer hairs as well because I think in the reference images you can see a combination of both short hairs and long hairs. So let's come over here, go plus, create another hair group, and let's this time make it 120 particles. Let's bring the hair length down, but not as short as before, maybe something like this. And then scroll down to children, make it interpolate it, and then go down to our clumping and let's go and give it a little bit of clump quite a bit actually. And at the moment, this is looking a little bit too clean. So we're going to enable clump noise as well. And now it's got a little bit more noise to it. Um, I'm going to come to the drop down and just maybe bring that amount mess around of it. Just bringing it down. So it's not as intense. There we go. 
And we also want to come here and get the use clamp curve, just to give us a bit more control. And let's just actually drag this value down here and the top one down like so. There we go. So we maybe want to just a little bit more at the base and a little bit less over here. Then we can click and just add one kind of middle curve. And now we have a little bit of shape on that, which looks really cool. Now we also don't want just sticking through the eye. So we're going to scroll down to our vertex group and also use that same density group there. Okay, that's looking really, really cool. So now let's go Shift A. Let's go to our light options, add an area light. Let's go G, Z and move it up. And let's go to our light properties, give it strength of 300. Let's give it a size of two meters and let's go Z and then go rendered. And in our front view, what we'll do is we'll go Shift D to duplicate that light, move it over, R to rotate it coming in from the side, Shift D to duplicate, let's have another one coming from the side. And then in our top view, let's go Shift D, duplicate this one, kind of have it coming from the front. So just something simple like this. And I'm also going to go into front view and just go Shift A. I'll add in a camera and maybe just in the side view, I'll move it forward. Then press zero to go into camera view and you can position your camera however you want. But I'm just going to go something like this for now. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the little soot guy here. I'm going to go over to my materials. And with the soot body, I'll come here to the base color and just make it dark under the surface, but not black, maybe kind of like a gray. Okay. And then I'm going to go plus, I'm going to go create a new material and let's just call this soot 2. I'm going to come here to the base color and make that one even darker. And what we're going to do, we're going to go to particles and with the second particle group, the longer hairs here. In fact, let's just double click on it and call it long. And then click on the first one and call it short. So let's click on the long one and let's just come down to the render and under the material here, we want to make that soot too. Okay, so it's using that material. So if we go back to our materials here with the soot too, we can kind of, you know, we can change it, even give it different colors. Um, but obviously you want to kind of stick closer to what is accurate. So something like this. And so the body is just a little bit more gray and the outer hair is a little bit more black. Pretty cool. Okay, let's select the eye. Let's go to our materials. And with the eye material that we added in the first part, I'm going to come here and drag the roughness all the way down to zero, zero here. I'm going to click on the pupil, which you've already added. And let's just make this um, base color black and also bring down that roughness. Now with the eye here, looking at the reference, it's not pure white, it's a little bit off white. So let's just make this kind of more like a creamy kind of color, something like that. And I think that looks much better. Selecting the arms and legs, we added a material in the first part. So let's just come here to the surface and make that black as well. And let's bring down the roughness. Because so we might actually bring the roughness up on that one a little bit to about 0.6. Okay, so here we have it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go Shift A. I'm just going to add in a plane. I'm going to go RX90, hitting Enter. And I'll move this plane up. And this plane is just going to go in the background like so. And I'll just scale that up and out like so. And I'll grab that plane and go give it the material and call it BG for background. And under the base color, I'll make that one darker. And to make the suit monster stand out, what we'll do is we'll select some of these lights. And in our top view, we're going to go Shift D to duplicate and kind of just have them coming right from behind the character here, kind of creating some nice rim lighting. I'm going to go Shift D to duplicate, have another one kind of coming from here. And that kind of just helps it stand out from the background. Okay, so one more thing we're going to do is just select the suit monster here. Let's go to our particles and let's just go to the short hair. Scroll down to the hair shape, make it 0.4 on the root diameter, go up and let's select the long hair and let's just go all the way down to the hair shape and make this 0.4 as well on the root diameter. Make sure to save. And now we're just gonna go render and we're gonna do a test render by clicking here on render image. And there we go. Our little suit monster is looking absolutely adorable. I just love the way this is coming out. It's probably my favorite character tutorial I've ever done on the channel. I really love this one. 
So this has been part two, which is so far really successful. I'll see you guys in part three, which is gonna be the next and final part. Where we're gonna rig this little guy up so you can animate him if you wanted to. Okay, so that's gonna be part three. And as always, I will be uploading the blend file for this project on my Patreon. You can check the description if you wanna join that. It is paid, but it also helps support the channel. And on top of this, you get access to hundreds more um, projects that I've got on there and even tutorials. So check that out in the description and I'll see you guys in part three.